There are few, if any, more frightening words than cancer. For many people, that word is not a diagnosis, but rather a death sentence. Roughly a million and a half Americans receive that diagnosis each year, and too many of them believe that their situation is practically hopeless. Daniel Kennedy and the Oasis of Hope insist that cancer is beatable through natural approaches, both through preventing, controlling, or even defeating cancer. Founded in 1963 by the late Dr. Ernesto Contreras Sr., the Oasis of Hope pioneered a treatment vision called the Total Cancer Treatment Approach. It recognizes the need to treat the body, the mind, and the spirit. It's founded in the medical tradition of Hippocrates, and the golden rule is taught in the New Testament. Medical practitioners are taught to love the patient as they love themselves. Dr. Contreras taught medical staff never to prescribe cancer treatments that would impair or destroy the patient's quality of life and to develop personalized therapies for each individual patient. More than 100,000 patients from 55 countries have sought out treatment at Oasis of Hope over the past 45 years. Daniel Kennedy is the lead counselor at the Oasis of Hope Centers in California and Mexico, and he joins us today to describe what he calls a victory plan in the struggle against cancer. Daniel, welcome to WHDT World News. How did you get involved in the struggle against cancer? Well, I was literally born into it. The founder of Oasis of Hope, Ernesto Contreras, is my grandfather on my mother's side. So growing up, uh, I was actually around the hospital when I was in diapers, and then later when I was an adolescent, I figured out that wheelchairs could race down halls uh, quickly. And I guess after years of just kind of playing and being in the environment, um, I realized that I really had a call uh, to work with people who were facing cancer. And it, it really was um, res a response of compassion. I, I started caring for people that I was meeting around the lunch table. But in 1995, it became very personal for me uh, when at Thanksgiving dinner, my uh, father announced to the family that he had been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, so he was 58 years old at the time. His cancer was completely operable. Um, it was a tumor in his kidney and it had not spread. So uh, he had his kidney removed. Uh, and last week, he just celebrated his 76th birthday. So uh, it's, it's really uh, important for me to share the news that there are many options. Sometimes surgery is an option, uh, sometimes it's not, but cancer can be beat. Now, Always of Hope focuses on alternative approaches to conventional uh, cancer treatments. What is the difference in your approach? Well, we're an integrative, and I think the most important thing is that when Dr. Contreras Sr. started out treating patients, he was not on an agenda to promote any kind of therapy. He was on an agenda to promote the health of his patients. So he wouldn't uh, deny access to a patient to any viable treatment um, as long as it wouldn't compromise the quality of their, their lives. So that's where the rub really comes in with conventional medicine because most of the time chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery will compromise the quality of a patient's life. So we're not looking for a specific therapy to use for the patient. Our focus is on helping a patient get well. Sometimes we do integrate conventional therapies, but the difference between Oasis of Hope and standard oncology is that standard oncologists 100% of their treatment would be chemotherapy. At Oasis of Hope, if we use any type of conventional therapy, it would only represent 10 to 15% of the overall program. Now, one dimension of treatment you emphasize is the spiritual element of healing. You focus on the mind and spirit as well as the body. How much of the struggle against this disease actually takes place in the mind and soul of the patient? Well, that is still going to be determined as we go into the future. Uh, the reason why I say that is it could be that the medicine of the future won't involve any kind of medication or any kind of ph pharmaceuticals. It may be just on training you how to have thoughts that would cause your body to manufacture what it needs, provided that you give the correct nutrients through your nutrition but your body is a, is a pharmacy. 
And so I, I'm predicting that in the next hundred years, we will just be prescribing thoughts. Um, the field of psychoendocrinology is growing, it's becoming more scientific, and there are universities uh, in the United States right now that are trying to dosify thoughts so that your endocrine system will produce the hormones that your body needs to overcome the health challenge. That's going way off on a tangent. Oasis of Hope today um, is practicing medicine where we are doing all kinds of therapies and, and different infusions. Well, but, Daniel, uh, one, one of the treatments you offer at Oasis of Hope is laetrile therapy. How is laetrile administered and, and what is the success rate and why isn't laetrile being used here in the United States? Well, laetrile is something that uh, Dr. Ernesto Contreras Sr. started using in 1963 when a patient found him. She was named Cecile Hoffman and she brought the therapy with her uh, from Canada where she was receiving it and she was living in San Diego so it was closer for her to go to Dr. Contreras in Tijuana, Mexico and that's how he discovered laetrile and uh, Cecile Hoffman within three months went into remission just using laetrile shots. Uh, it's injectable, it's also um, available as uh, tablets and normally a patient will inject three to six grams a day Back in the 60s when Dr. Ernesto Contreras Sr. was using Laetrile, uh, he was giving pancreatic enzymes, Laetrile shot, and that was the entire treatment, and people were going into remission, uh, and later, five years later, uh, recognized as being cured of cancer, left and right, thousands and thousands of people. What, what's, what's Today, st what stage of, of cancer were these individuals in? The majority of the patients that come to Oasis of Hope to this state are stage four, uh, which means that their primary cancer has then spread to a distant organ. So uh, we have many patients with breast cancer where the uh, cancer has spread maybe to the liver or to the lungs, many patients with uh, stage four lung cancer. Um, and if today we were to give just the pancreatic enzymes uh, with laetrile shots and coffee enemas, we probably wouldn't save a whole lot of people. Cancer has become so much more aggressive over the last 50 years that we've been treating it that we've had to develop a very comprehensive wraparound program where we're using 10 different elements to develop our uh, treatment protocols. Uh, so cancer is very complex uh, and one of the toughest reasons why it is uh, hard to treat cancer is because it mutates. Even as you are giving a specific therapy, cancer starts to mutate at the level of its DNA to become resistant to that treatment. And that's really the explanation of why cancer treatment in America is failing because the cancer is mutating. Initially, you give chemotherapy, almost all cancers will have some positive uh, objective result, but then it mutates and becomes chemo resistant and it stops working. So the doctors, instead of looking for alternatives, just increase the dose or change to more aggressive chemotherapies and the, the uh, cancer is always one step ahead mutating and becoming resistant. So treatment. Daniel, do you find that patients come to you after they've already undergone chemotherapy? The majority do, and it makes perfect sense to me. Um, if my car broke down uh, and I needed a repair, I just go to the same repair shop that I've always gone to. I wouldn't look for an alternative, uh, you know, across the continent. Uh, and that's how, you know, as you're a child, you go and see a doctor. Your parents take you to see a family doctor. And when you are diagnosed, you're diagnosed in the U.S. by a doctor and the doctor tells you what to do. Throughout your life, if you had a cold, you went home and uh, did nothing really because medicine can't treat the cold. But you, you just were programmed to do whatever the doctor said and eventually you would get well, even if it weren't the drug therapy, just maybe time and nutrition healed you. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for a person uh, to look for alternative cancer treatment until they've tried what was recommended to them by their uh, home primary physician and it failed to help them. Uh, unfortunately, that means that most of the patients that come to Oasis of Hope have advanced late stage cancer, but we still have much better results. Daniel, your battle plan also emphasizes the need for prevention. 
Uh, what lifestyle changes can Americans embrace that would minimize their risks of cancer and help them overcome it if they're diagnosed with the disease? I believe that almost everybody in the United States knows exactly what they need to do to prevent cancer. My worry is how do we help motivate people to make those changes? For example, quit smoking. It's amazing, but smoking is related to most types of cancers, not just lung cancer. Uh, the increase in the rate of um, incidence for cancer of the breast uh, has gone so much higher after the 1960s with the women's lib uh, movement. Women started to smoke. They wanted to be equal with men and they started taking on the, uh, the habits of men. Did you know that 20% of cancer of the breast, uh, well, you increase your risk by 20% just by drinking alcohol and being, uh, drinking alcohol to excess. So prevention is all about lifestyle. And there are studies that came out this year in 2013 that show us that through exercise and proper nutrition, we can lower our risk by 50%. I think that's important because the incidence rate for a lifetime is predicted to be one out of every two men will have cancer at some point in their lifetime, one out of every three women. So why wouldn't you want to lower your risk by 50%? So what I did for my personal life is I just started cutting out junk and learning how to not miss it anymore. Uh, and so fast food, for example, it's just not an option. And then I started making a list of the foods that heal, um, such as broccoli and cauliflower and kale and bok choy, um, tomatoes. And mostly what I do is I look for uh, foods that are low on the glycemic index. So really it means no bread. Um, that metabolizes into sugar right away. Uh, a lot of the fruit juices are not very healthy. Obviously, um, soft drinks are just literally now, they're killing us. Daniel, how do you how do you see uh, GMOs and and the increase of uh, you know uh, corn syrup and, and artificial sweeteners uh, affecting cancer in the in the United States at, at, with their increased use? Well, I think we're seeing, uh, you know, the incidence rates um, are just validating that our lifestyle what we're eating and all that corn syrup is just resulting in cancer. This year, again, we'll have uh, close to 1.5 million people diagnosed with cancer and the deaths from cancer are reaching about 600,000 a year. Uh, so you have to look at the diet where you can really get the argument for uh, diet being so um, important is when you look at third world countries and their cancer incidence is so low because they don't have the money to purchase uh, processed foods. So they live very primitively and they eat a primitive diet. And guess what? The primitive diet was the one that was actually designed for our bodies anyway. So our body works better. Now, could you describe some of the success stories you've seen at the Oasis of Hope? I, I, we did a, some investigation. We saw that uh, you had treated the, uh, the son of the famous uh, makeup, uh, makeup artist, Max Factor. Uh, do you, what are some other success stories? Uh, well, you know, I mentioned about uh, Max Factor's son, Donald. Uh, it was 1986. He was living in London, and he had heard Dr. Anessa Contreras Sr. speak at a conference. Uh, when he didn't know he had cancer. When he was diagnosed with cancer, he went down to the fine doctors at Harley Street in London, uh, the famous street where all the top physicians are, and they said, you have stage four cancer. It's metastasized to your spinal column and also to your liver, so we might be able to extend your life by two to three months. Uh, and he decided not to accept that. He, re he remembered the lecture by Dr. Contreras Sr., uh, and he came to Tijuana, and well, he's still alive today. Uh, he responded. Not all cases respond that way, but, but we have story after story of people that have responded uh, to treatment. A, a very interesting case is a patient from 1974 uh, that was also Contreras Sr.'s patient. His name is Rick Hill. Uh, Rick Hill was 22 or 24 when he was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, and the Mayo Clinic also told him they couldn't extend his life past uh, three months. Well, he's alive today. 
And he's the person who answers our phone if you would call our toll-free number to get information about how Oasis of Hope could be your treatment center. It's Rick Hill. He's in his 40th year of uh, cancer victory. And I tell you what, talking to Rick will uh, really build your hope that you can beat cancer. Now, what is the term of treatment? Uh, what sort of insurances can be applied uh, at, to, uh, to, to undergo treatment at Oasis of Hope? Yes, most insurance policies will not pay for any kind of treatment outside of the country uh, if the hospital bills for it. But patients that uh, bill their own insurance company um, have a high uh, percentage of reimbursement, which is good. Uh, and you know, most people think, well, if you go to a hospital in the U.S., my insurance can be accepted, and that is not true. Um, more and more cancer treatment centers are uh, what is called out of network because the reimbursements are so low when uh, the treatment center is contracted with the insurance company. So many oncologists just are not accepting insurance. The patient has to use a billing company and submits the bill themselves and out of network billing um, is pretty successful at reimbursement. So uh, all the patients that come to Oasis of Hope uh, would need to plan on um, having some kind of loan or something to finance their treatment and then they would take their bill and use a billing company to get reimbursed um, and so that's a, a very good plan. Now what is it what is the term of treatment for somebody if they wanted to do uh, Laetrile? Yes we do uh, normally a two-week stay at Oasis of Hope and then we send the patient home for three to four weeks for home therapy and so we're modulating the, the treatments that we do at the hospital uh, are a little bit more aggressive. And I'm not saying through chemotherapy, but I'm, I'm just saying that they are directly attacking the cancer cells. And then the home therapy is more about helping the immune system uh, join in on the fight. And then patients will come back uh, two to three times periodically and we'll continue to monitor them and during their whole treatment, we give education. Every day we get together with the patients and we're teaching them a new lifestyle. And we also offer a prevention program for uh, companions, which is really important because spouses are sharing the same uh, lifestyle. And so what led for maybe the husband to get cancer, if the wife is eating the same foods and living the same way, her risk for cancer is also increased. So what we try to do is treat the whole family, not just the patient. Now, Daniel, if somebody was to undergo laetrile therapies, uh, how, is the, how is the progress monitored? Uh, do you use traditional message, uh, methods like uh, PET scans? Oh, absolutely. Um, we use tumor markers, um, all kinds of blood work, CT scans, PET scans. Um, one thing that's very important for people to know, because um, when you, some people think of alternative cancer treatment centers, they, they think of some kind of back room shady not. We have board certified oncologists uh, and we use all of the state-of-the-art um, diagnostic because it's important. What we report um, is objective results and so we are measuring tumor regression. We're measuring um, also the overall health of the patient, their energy and such. And so um, that's what we did when we published our five-year study. We did a prospective study with patients with advanced um, stage four cancer of the breast, uh, cancer of the lung, cancer of the ovarian, uh, of the ovary, and colorectal cancer. And our five-year study, uh, we followed the patients in the group, and then we compared that against the national averages that are published by the National Cancer Institute, and across the board, our results were far better than the national averages. Now let's talk about that for a minute because the vision behind Oasis of Hope is strikingly different from the one promoted by what we might call the, uh, the cancer establishment here in the United States. How is your work received by promoters of conventional uh, on oncological medicine? Well, that's changing right now because the general public uh, is very knowledgeable um, ever since we've had access to a wide uh, range of information through the internet. Uh, patients now know that chemotherapy alone is not going to beat cancer in the long run for most 
patients, especially when you're talking about stage four cancer. And so oncologists are having to change. And as you can see uh, across the board, um, the major cancer treatment centers are starting to offer some kind of alternative cancer treatment, even if it's just sending their patients to see a chiropractor um, or a nutritionist. So we're becoming more and more uh, received, and I believe we're becoming more and more modeled after. This year, uh, in May, I went to the Integrative Oncology Society presentation by the University of California, San Diego, and they had speakers from around the world presenting about how to do integrative uh, cancer treatment. And I was really blown away because I, I would have to tell you that the experts in the United States um, that were invited there were speaking about things that Dr. Ernesto Contreras Sr. was doing 40 years ago. So I believe that medicine in the United States, as far as integrative oncology, is in its infancy, whereas Oasis of Hope is, is well seasoned in 50 years of clinical um, expertise. Well, Daniel, you've, you've estimated that about 90% of the patients treated at Oasis of Hope arrive with late stage cancers, which is to yes. say that they've exhausted conventional approaches. Uh, would, it be, uh, would it be wise for people to seek out your help early? It would. In the five-year prospective study that I was telling you about, we did have one group of patients um, with breast cancer stage four that had not been treated before they came to Oasis of Hope. And uh, how that worked out was the national average for five-year survival for patients with breast cancer in stage four, which means it's spread uh, to some other organ, is 20%. And that's actually pretty high um, to see a 20% survival rate in stage four breast cancer. Uh, that's a real positive number. It's not like it's 1%, 20% is respectable. But at Oasis of Hope, the patients that had already gone through treatment and the treatment failed them in the United States and then come to our uh, center, their five-year uh, survival rate was 45%. That's more than double than the 20% national average. But the patients that had stage four breast cancer that had no other treatment before Oasis of Hope had a 75% survival rate. So even our results increased from 45% from patients that had already been devastated by chemotherapy and surgery and radiation our rate increased from 45% to 75% just because the patient came to us without having their body devastated by conventional treatment. Wow, that's fascinating. Daniel, how can people uh, contact you to learn more about your work and perhaps seek, uh, seek treatment at the Oasis of Hope? Now, we have a toll-free number. People can call us at 1-888-500-HOPE. So uh, HOPE is 4673. So Give us a call at 1-888-500-4673, and you're gonna be able to speak with our cancer victor, Rick Hill, and he will uh, take you through a medical questionnaire, and then he collects all the information for Dr. Contreras, and Dr. Contreras sits down daily and goes through all of the medical questionnaires and develops a personalized treatment plan for every single person who contacts us. And we will send that out in writing and let you know what our approach is and what the possible benefits uh, are for you at no obligation. So it costs you nothing to contact us. You'll spend about 30 minutes on the phone with us, with Rick Hill. Um, but a 30 minute phone call may be exactly what you need to do to save your life. What was that number again? 1-888-500-4673.